you were telling me the other day that you'd recently made a change in your own business plan, and that is to move away from straight agenting or representation into personal management, mm -hmm. and which I think in some ways is what you've always done. <laughs> now yes. you're just putting a name on it. But mm -hmm. how is how is that going? How is it different? And most importantly, if composers out there now who don't yet have any kind of representation mm -hmm. are thinking about this and thinking, hmm, what exactly does a personal manager do? Mm -hmm. What do you think they should expect of someone in your position? Well, I, I did it, first of all, it was not a, a need. I just put an official title, as you said, in something that I was doing already only for you know, three, four of my clients. For everyone else, I'm still just the agent. But there are some clients that, uh, some composers that they do so many different things, like Thomas that we mentioned, Thomas Kantelinen from uh, Finland, that uh, when you end up, especially after many years of working together and having such a good relationship, dealing with so many different things, you say, what is the point of me just being your agent? Actually, I have to be your manager, which means that together we sit down and we make the uh, same business choices for mm -hmm. your career because one day I'm dealing with him for a film he's doing, another day for a, a series, the other day for a concert that he's preparing somewhere. And then maybe for an album that he wants some singer songwriter from another country, they want them to do together, they want him. So I have to deal with so many different aspects of his creative output, that it just made sense to be his manager instead of just his agent. Mm -hmm. Uh, when it comes to representation, though, especially in this part of the world, or in, in any place where uh, representation even doesn't exist, you can say, because in Europe, maybe let's put it like that, outside of US and UK, where it's the heavy industry, and the heavy industry exists there only because English-speaking content is produced constantly and distributed all over the world every time. It's not that it's, you know, it's a Bulgarian film that they might have an easy time to find distribution in the Balkan countries, very difficult right. time to find in Scandinavia, if it's not a good story, I mean. Interesting for Scandinavians. It's English-speaking content. That's where the industry is. They do it all the time. So there is so much content produced over there. You need the, the mediate, someone to negotiate on your behalf, take care of your business, right. and all that. Uh, but here, I'm telling them, you just have to be an agent of yourself. You don't need an agent. You definitely don't need a manager unless you are coming from the band side of things or you are a solo artist who is already famous some, in some way as a great singer, songwriter, guitarist, whatever. And you, don't wa you want to do film scoring, but you, don't, you are not going to drop the live gigs or releasing albums. Then either way, for these people, managers do exist. Is it reasonable? But just film scoring, finding an agent in Europe, it's... Right. I don't think producers uh, want or understand what an agent can do when they are about to hire a composer in right. Europe. Right. It took me quite some time to explain to Europeans what I do in the first years when I started from 2009, 2010. Is it reasonable for a composer to expect that a personal manager might sit down with them and say, okay, I've heard your music, I understand your music, I think I know what your strengths mm -hmm. and weaknesses are. I think we need to find you a, an intense family drama of the sort that plays well in regional mm -hmm. festivals and so forth. Do you, do you get that deep mm. into it with the composer? Where it's a, it's a actually... very, very interesting way you, you put it because it's the same way that uh, I'm saying that here it's more the director's world than the producer's world, which means that even if the producer of whatever project is extremely powerful, they do trust their directors until the very end, most of the times, okay. In a similar manner, a manager with his artist, they don't necessarily suggest things. We might have ideas to throw there, but they, the artist will decide in the end. Mm -hmm. You know, I might find a project or I might find an opportunity for a nice collaboration, but the artist will decide 
that's not me or that is me. Right. Let's explore it more. Yeah. And it's not about really having work or doing something that will benefit them in publicity or money-wise. If it doesn't speak to them, if that's not who they are, they won't do it. Right. Right. Uh, so it's still the artist's world too, in that sense. 